Before I start this video, I want to say that this is kind of like a part 2 to this video. You don't need to watch that before watching this one, so I'll put the link in the description for you to watch after this. So sit back, relax, and please watch me ramble. Hey guys, check out my gold head cannon. Sure. Wait, why is he black? Isn't he Japanese? It's my head cannon, so it's no big deal. Calm down. Before I continue, I'm going to have to use the labels white and black, and I understand that it's pretty weird to label such huge groups of people from different cultures, countries, and continents into two basic labels that were created solely for division, but I'm going to have to use those for simplification purposes. Anyway, it seems nowadays headcanons are being used as excuses to race swap characters, especially white or light-skinned POC characters, and a lot of these people that claim these are headcanons don't seem to understand what a headcanon is even is. A headcanon is defined as something that a fan imagines to be true about a character even though no information supporting that belief is spelled out in the text. You can't claim by a headcanon that Luffy is black because it is canon that he's Brazilian, but you can headcanon that Knuckles is black because he has no race since he's not human. You can also headcanon Mina from MHA as Blasian since we don't know what her real skin color would be because of her quirk. There are some cases though where a non-human character is black coded, like Darwin, Simba, or Garnet. So drawing these characters as humans with a different race other than black wouldn't be considered as headcanons. Black coded characters are not technically black, typically because the race system constructed is not mirrored in the fictional worlds they exist in. They are instead coded as black by their physical features or they have similar beliefs, clothing, food, music, or things they do that are associated with a specific culture in the black African diaspora. Sometimes black coding is not intentional. For example, some people think Starfire would be black if she were human because her first design's features are similar to a light-skinned black woman and also because her brother has dreadlocks. But it has been confirmed that Starfire was never intended to be black or have any human race. But black coded, hispanic coded, or whatever race coded characters are not to be confused with fanons. If fanon is something introduced by fans which are not in the official canon of a fictional world but are widely believed to be or treated as if canonically. I think fanons are fine but they can get out of hand because artists feel pressure to draw a certain character by the fanon, even if they don't personally headcanon them as that. I mean an example would be of Knuckles. It is fanon that he's black so when an Asian artist dream with light skin, he got harassed for it. And another artist quote unquote fixed the drawing by making him dark skin. Fortunately, the artist who fixed the original drawing was called out and did apologize for her actions, but a lot of cases like this happen and they are barely called out for this. I don't like the groupthink mentality fans create where if someone deviates from the status quo, they receive a lot of backlash. I think it's cool when lots of people agree with the headcanon, it creates a feeling of validity in your belief about the character, which makes you think, if lots of people believe in this interpretation of the character, then that means maybe it might just be true. But just because a lot of people believe in a headcanon doesn't mean others should be stopped from believing a different one. It's funny that Pinkie Pie is black and I do like the idea of a black Pinkie Pie but personally, growing up I always imagined a human version of her would be pale with curly red hair. So the point is, no matter how popular a headcanon is, some people might have different interpretations of a character and you shouldn't go after them for it or debate why your headcanon is superior. The second thing I don't like about fanons is that sometimes they also pressure their creators into making their headcanon canon and some even go as far as to send them death threats. And the third thing I don't like about about them is that they can give new viewers wrong ideas about a show or its characters. I thought for the longest time that Sheldon was canonically autistic. Anyway, when you change a character's canon race, it's not a headcanon, it's a redesign. If you want to redesign a character to see them as a different race just out of curiosity without claiming it as a superior design, but just out of being like, oh, this is how this character will look like if they were black, white, Asian, Hispanic, Middle Eastern, Native American, etc. That is fine. I've seen videos of people doing that before in respectful ways, where they make it clear they're just drawing them as different ethnicities out of curiosity and if the character would still be recognizable. If they don't suddenly draw a character as a different race with zero context, then get mad when people call them out and reply to these people claiming it's a headcanon to justify it. Now apart from hiding behind the label of a headcanon to be able to race swap, some go as far as to argue it isn't the sake of representation. They go, I'm doing it for representation. Oh, black people are so underrepresented, so it doesn't hurt to toss them the leftovers, they can have 
have it since they need it. Shut the fluff up! I have to say that if that is your reasoning, if you truly believe it is empowering for black people, then I am sorry, but you're delusional. No matter how much your race bent a pre-existing character, they're always going to be the kind of race they were. If you truly want to draw black characters for representation, you should draw the ones that already exist, like Canary from Hunter x Hunter, Michiko Malandro from Michiko and Hachin, Yurichi from Bleach, Daryu from Naruto, Atsuko Jackson from Michiko and Hachin, Muhammad Evdo from Jojo, Afro Samurai, etc. But no, you don't want to draw those ones because they're not popular. But if you claim you're trying to empower black people, you should give more attention to those black characters so more people would talk about them. Also, if you want to watch an anime with a lot of black characters, I highly recommend watching Ken and Busters. Anyway, it's actually a bit surprising that black people have as much representation as we already do in anime, considering how tiny the population of black people are in Japan. So you can't complain or expect for there to be a lot of black representation when it comes to anime. It's like a Japanese person indulging in Nigerian shows and movies, then complaining about the lack of Asian representation in Nigerian media. I'm not saying that black people shouldn't want to see more black characters in anime, and of course black people have the right to be mad if some black characters in anime are stereotypical and offensive. I'm just saying it's a little weird to complain about having little black representation in anime when it comes from a homogeneous country. Anyway, if you want to draw black characters in a show that doesn't have black characters, then you can make original OCs that in your AU of the show exist in. When Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse came out, lots of artists were inspired to make their own spider sonas based on their cultures, and it was cool learning more about different people's cultures. Black people do not need hand-me-downs from white or light-skinned POC, we deserve our own original characters. A good example of how black washing erases authentic representation is with Blacktober. Blacktober started off as a celebration between black artists of all ages and backgrounds, tagging their art and promoting their work on Twitter. Since Twitter's algorithm is non-existent, it was a great idea to get talented people of diverse backgrounds more attention on their art. At first. Blackwashing somewhat took off in 2018 when an illustrator by the name of Nicholas Draper Ivy made a Final Fantasy VII fan art of Cloud, Tifa, Sephiroth, and even Barrett race swapped to dark skin and light skin versions respectfully. The art is really amazingly done and it looks really cool. Ivy's work inspired other artists to start thinking of what if this character's skin was darker? And in 2018, people started blackwashing and race swapping cartoon characters. And at first, even I thought it was a neat little experiment to just change the race of an anime character or a cartoon character. I completely understand why someone would do a race swap of a cartoon character. This is mainly more common in children and teenagers rather than grown adults. Kids around the age of eight years old want to see something that they can relate to on a physical scale, like something they can reflect themselves onto. That's why when you see an American show, there are a lot more different types of visually different people because America has so many different types of races and ethnics it's impossible to cover them all. I don't want anyone to think that it's impossible to see why someone would race swap a cartoon character, but the situation we're talking about today is inexcusable and downright plagiarizing and stealing art. The more people began to do redraws of anime characters as black, not brown skin, specifically black Americans, some of this shit got a little, how you say, you know, with the big pink lips, the wide noses, the pale palms underneath the hands, the horribly, horribly nappy looking hair. Just the most stereotypical features you can think of when it comes to black people. But I know what you're thinking. Oh, it can't be bad, Squiddy. Oh, you're just overreacting. You're just taking the fun out of all of this. The art's not that bad. Black washing isn't a bad thing. <laughs> You serious? You look at this image right now and tell me that this is quality. Yes, this will solve the representation problem in anime because anime apparently had a representation problem with black people, even though black people make up 0.02% of their entire population. Yes, this will make black people proud, stealing art and screenshots from already drawn things and just slap your own image on there. Yes, that's beautiful. 
beautiful, wonderful, yes, you are doing a lot of black people a favor by showing Japanese people that we fucking steal things. Here are some comments from that video. When Blacktober first came out, I thought it was artists who would draw existing characters and or promote their creators or even kickstarters for projects. To hear that most of these projects were cancelled and uncared for seems like the opposite of what the message was supposed to be. Someone replied rudely to the comment and basically said it doesn't affect anyone, but another person replied to them and said, It affects plenty. It's not supporting black creators, it's just poorly editing a character and then claiming its representation. Seriously, I'm tired of people acting like this does anything for black or Asian representation. Slapping on that label just benefits no one but you people. You're not helping Blasians by doing this, so shut it. I 100% agree with that comment. Another one says, There is no excuse to do blackwashing, whitewashing, etc. Making an existing character a different color isn't diversity at all, and relating to a character because of skin color is just untrue. I think Blacktober should be about creating existing black characters or making your own OCs. There's no need to do that sort of thing where you color over a character with a different skin color. Again, I fully agree with this comment. The most common argument people say is black washing doesn't exist. I got tons of comments saying this on my previous video. This doesn't make sense because it does happen, like with Hadi Bailey played Ariel, Tinkerbell being played by Yara Shahidi, there's even brown washing with Snow White being played by Rachel Ziegler, etc. I also want to make it clear that even though I don't support blackwashing, it is not the same as whitewashing unless it's to another POC character. I thought I made it clear already in my blackwashing video towards the end, but it seems some people missed that or it just went over their heads because some comments were equating blackwashing to whitewashing and others were trying to educate me on why whitewashing is worse when I'd already said that in my video. But for those that don't understand why whitewashing is worse, the reason why is because of intentions. Whitewashing was made to erase POC characters, while black Blackwashing or POC washing with characters does not have those same intentions, most of the time. Black people and other POC have an excuse that it's because of little to no representation, while white people do not have that excuse at all. I also got a comment that thought whitewashing doesn't exist anymore, but it still does. Here are some modern examples. In the YA zombie romance Warm Bodies, Annelie Tipton played the role of Nora, who Isaac Myron originally wrote as a half Ethiopian girl in his novel. In the movie Aloha, Emma Stone was casted to play Captain Allison, who is half Chinese, half native Hawaiian. Angelina Jolie played Fox from the comic book series Wanted. Fox was written as an African American woman and was partly inspired by Halle Berry. Ben Affleck played Tony Mendes and Argo, who is Hispanic. Mickey Rooney played Mr. Yoshi in Breakfast at Tiffany's and also did Yellowface. Tilda Swinton as the Asian one in Doctor Strange who is meant to be of Asian descent. There are so many more but I'll just stop there. And even outside of Hollywood, some shows take POC characters in media and whitewash them. And some even take artists who sees and do that to them. Another argument people say is blackwashing is made to give white people a taste of their own medicine for whitewashing. Some of these people say it's revenge against white people, yet they go ahead to blackwash light-skinned POC characters. I noticed that when there is a dark skin character who isn't black, people don't blackwash them. They only do it when the character is light skin, even if they're a POC. And that has to do with how they don't see non white light skin people as POC enough. But they are forgetting that whitewashing hasn't only been used against black and dark skin POC. Hollywood has a long history of whitewashing East Asian characters and practicing yellowface. A modern example is Ghost in the Shell. And uh, besides, revenge is never the answer. It reminds me of a Nigerian folk tale I heard when I was younger. The story has different variations, so I'm just going to call them two main characters in the story, Ade and Amotola. So long long ago there were two friends, Ade and Amotola. Ade was known for a beautiful cooking pot crafted by the finest hands in the village, while Amotola possessed a magnificent tree with lush ripe fruits that bore magical powers. One day Ade lent her treasured cooking pot to Amotola, who promised to return it after using it for a feast. However, days turned into weeks and Amotola made no effort to return the pot. Ade grew impatient and demanded its return, but Amotola was cunning and claimed that the pot was stolen from her so she couldn't return it until it was found. Ade knew this was a lie because she'd seen her with the pot some days earlier, but she didn't know what to do so out of desperation she went to see a wise elder who gave her a plan. The plan was for Ade to ask Amotola to cut down her magical tree and use its wood to build a new cooking pot. And since Amotola treasured 
treasured her tree, she would be hesitant to do so. A day followed the elder's plan, and as expected, Omotala hesitated, unwilling to part with her prized possession. But a day persisted, convincing her that it was the only way to repay her. Reluctantly, Omotala agreed to cut on her beloved tree. A day watched triumphantly as the tree fell, and she retrieved her pot from within its hollow trunk. But little did she know, Omotala had sworn to seek revenge for the loss of her cherished tree. A year later, Ade gave birth to a baby girl, and Omotala gifted the baby a beautiful necklace. When Ade's daughter turned 16, Omotala went to their house and demanded Ade give back her necklace. Ade tried to, but the necklace was too tight to remove from her daughter's neck. But Omotala continued demanding to get her necklace back, so Omotala told Ade to cut off her daughter's neck and give her back the necklace. In the end, Ade ended up having to give up her most prized possession, her daughter. So the moral of the story is that revenge breeds further suffering. It can escalate conflicts and cause irreparable harm to everyone involved. Anyway, another argument people make is but I meet them next, so I still kept the original heritage, therefore no erasure. This argument is more common in people who blackwash Asian anime characters. Well, I'm sorry to say it, but it's still erasure. I'll explain why I think so very soon. I said the same thing in my blackwashing video, and a comment on it told me this. I don't know how to say this, but you're being racist and colorist. Though I'm sure you didn't realize you were doing that. Just the argument you are making relies on the idea that if a POC character with pale skin is drawn with dark skin, they are no longer that race and it's erasing their identity. The same thing for drawing a POC character is mixed. This line of thinking falls flat on his face the moment you realize that there are Japanese people with naturally very dark skin, and that most fan artists darken skin tones rather than lightening them because colorism favors light skin over dark skin in the countries they live in, and being mixed isn't a subtractive experience but an additive one. Making Deku Blasian doesn't erase his Asian-ness. Like, imagine saying to a new real-life black but Japanese person that they aren't actually Japanese because they're also black. They are black and Japanese equally. That's the entire point. The mindset you've presented in this video is one that only serves to gatekeep mixed people from their own identities. I'm sorry if the way I said that implied I meant that, but that is not what I mean at all when I say it's erasure. The only reason why people say they made the character Blasian is to make an excuse to draw them darker. Most of the time, they don't give them any Asian features and make them look fully black. So it is evident that they just want to make them black and are hiding behind making them mixed as an excuse. And that reminds me of how Hollywood would make dark skin POC characters mixed to make them light skin, erasing dark skin representation. The comment also mentioned how there are Japanese people with very dark skin, but Deku is obviously not one of those people, so why change him? I know in a lot of countries light skin is the beauty standard, but I feel like it's no excuse to change the skin tone of a character. It's better to draw characters that have the skin tone you want to draw or make your own original characters. I explained this to the comment and they replied with this. I'm not going to read it out so you can pause to read it yourself, but basically they were saying making some Someone darker is better than making someone lighter because of the history, colorism, and underrepresentation of dark skinned people. So it doesn't take away any representation of light skinned people but gives representation to dark skinned people. Like I said in my previous video and earlier in this one, I am well aware that whitewashing is worse than blackwashing, but it still doesn't make blackwashing right, neither does it give representation, because no matter what, the original character would be remembered as the race and skin tone they were, and the race bent version of their character would never be able to stand on their own, they would always be tied back to the original character. So it's better to make new original characters that were created with black people in mind or celebrate the stories that have black characters. I am Nigerian, so I don't really have that much representation internationally, but I felt happy that Disney made Iwaju, a show set in Nigeria with Nigerian characters and collaborated with Kugali to ensure its authenticity instead of taking Mulan and making her half Nigerian or something. Iwaju and all of its characters had my culture in mind when they were made. That's why it felt so refreshing and exciting to me watching it. I especially loved how the characters spoke a blend of English, Nigerian Pidgin, and one of Nigerian's native languages, Yoruba. If they'd taken a pre-existing Disney character and made them Nigerian or half Nigerian, it would have felt like my culture was an afterthought to them, and they were doing some lazy half-baked attempt to convince the audience they care about representation. Anyway, another argument is I'm doing it to relate to the character. Who told you you need to be the same ethnicity as a character to relate to them? I've seen people relate to aliens, robots, toys, and freaking ponies. It reminds me of this video this character. They speak to me. Oh, that's nice. I'm gonna go ahead and add some head cannons. Sure, go for it. I'm gonna adjust their height a little bit. And let's emphasize their most distinct traits, like make them really, really in your face. Add a pinch of mental illness, well, a little more than a pinch, <laughs> and a hefty spoonful of LGBT. Some minor adjustments to their appearance here and there. What else? <gasps> Pointy teeth and painted nails. Anything else I can do? 
ooh, I'm gonna add some flavor to their backstory, kind of extrapolate on some details that maybe may or may not matter, fill in the gaps, you know what I'm saying. Throw some color in there, make them jazzy. And some of these, and some of these, and done. I love them. Honey, that's not the character. That's an OC wearing the character's face as a flesh mask. If you want to see yourself in a character, make your own or draw characters that are in the same group as you. Before I end this part of the video, I want to say that it's okay for anyone to cosplay or have avatars that aren't their race or skin tone. It's also okay to draw yourself cosplaying a character of a different race. You can even get creative and wear a wig similar to your hair type when cosplaying a character of another race. But remember, if you're cosplaying, you shouldn't paint your skin color to look like the character's race or do stereotypical mannerisms of that race, so you don't mistakenly do blackface, yellowface, etc. You can only paint over your skin if it's an unnatural color like pink, blue, green, etc. I think it's okay to headcon in a character as neurodivergent, but it can be offensive if your reasoning for a character having a mental disorder is because of stereotypes. And this is coming from someone who has undiagnosed ADHD and doesn't fit the stereotype for it. Just like with black coding, there is coding for neurodivergent characters in media. An example is autistic coding. Although autistic coded characters are a lot more intentional than black coded characters, a lot of people find their headcanons better than canon autistic representation. Because a lot of canon autistic characters in media unfortunately have stereotypes and are made to be mocked because of their autism. I recommend watching this video. It does a better job explaining this than I do. I'll put the link in my description. When it comes to physical disabilities, they can only be headcanons if it makes sense that the character might have one in the future, like Bakugo getting hearing aids because his explosions can cause damage to his ears over time. But if it doesn't make sense to the character, then it's not a headcanon. I'm not sure whether or not I can say it's offensive to take an able-bodied character and make them disabled. Some people say it's offensive, some people don't mind, so I don't know. I think the best thing is to draw existing disabled characters to make people know more about them. My favorite physically disabled characters are Toph from The Last Airbender and Mother from Clay Kids. Or you can make original OCs, but if you insist on redesigning existing characters to be disabled, make sure you don't use stereotypes and don't do it to mock disabilities. It's not a headcanon to make a character chubbier unless it makes sense to their character. For example, this artist's redesign of Momo from MHA, especially since Momo is actually chubby in the manga. Another example is in the webtoon adaptation of Trailer Trash, where Tapatha, the main character, lost weight during the summer, but was still a little round to be more realistic compared to the original novel, where she was able to transform into a skinny model-like body. But if it doesn't make sense to their character, then it's not a headcanon but a redesign. And redesigning a character chubbier, in my opinion, isn't bad as long as it's not too them. I think it can be offensive though to make a character skinnier, especially if it's a huge part of the character. For example, Joe from the webtoon Big Joe. It's not offensive if the character isn't drastically skinnier but slightly, or if the original character is extremely overweight, that's unhealthy, and you're making an EU where the character worked with themselves and got slimmer. If you want to redesign a character to see how they would look like if they were skinnier, you should say it in a respectful way without saying they look better or something like that. You have to make it clear that it's out of curiosity. Also, sometimes artists may make characters skinnier because they don't know how to draw plus size people or they made a mistake. So you can correct these people in the comments respectfully, don't take their art and fix it unless they ask people to, and don't insult them or go too far like what happened with an artist on Tumblr when she drew Rose a little skinnier and was harassed for it to the point where she almost committed suicide. I think shipping is fine as long as you don't hate on others for having different ships or pressure people working on the show to make your ship canon or harass them for making a different ship canon. An example of this is what happened to a storyboard artist for Steven Universe. She deleted her Twitter account because some fans were harassing her for drawing two Steven Universe characters together. They believed she was advocating for the ship of those characters over other fan preferred parents of the show's characters. These are screenshots of what she said before she deleted her account. Shipping can also cross the line if it is pro ship or calm shipping. A pro shipper is someone who supports romantic parents that are deemed problematic, as well as supports creative fan works of this nature. Some pro shippers may not like all problematic ships, but they don't see anything wrong with people liking them as long as it's fictional, while a calm shipper is someone who likes problematic ships but only in fictional settings. The problematic ships we're talking about here are shipping family members, minors with adults, animals with humans, abusers with their victims, etc. I think it's disgusting even if it's fictional 
motivational to support ships like this because people tend to project themselves onto fictional work. Also, supporting fictional things like this can slowly make you open to supporting things like that in the real world. Well, at least not all pro shippers like these type of ships, but for calm shippers to prefer these ships, that is deeply concerning. Religious headcanons are tricky. I think a religious headcanon can never truly be a headcanon unless it's in a fictional world where the religion a character has is coding for a real life religion. Other than that, drawing a character believing a certain religion can't be a headcanon but a redesign. There is a popular redesign of Fluttershy as a Muslim and since she's a pony and there is no religion in her universe, I don't think it's problematic to make her one. But it is problematic to take human characters with a religion and give them a different one or characters that don't have religions because they're atheists or don't believe in religion and give them one because it can come off as disrespectful. I've also seen some Muslims say it's offensive to give a non-Muslim character a hijab. I've also seen videos of people giving characters the religion they believe in to make it out like they've become better or something. For example, this video. Most of the comments were saying Alhamdulillah, which means praise to God in Arabic and saying how the characters have seen the light now, but there were also some pretty funny comments. But anyway, I think it's fine as long as the character isn't human with established spiritual beliefs. To foster a more inclusive and respectful fan art community, it requires a nuanced understanding of representation and a commitment to celebrating diverse characters without resorting to appropriation. We as fans must advocate for genuine representation in media, and the best way to do that is to celebrate the characters with the ethnicity, religion, disability, etc. we want to see more to show that we really want more authentic representation and not any kind of swaps. We should also support smaller brands and independent creators that already have the representation we so desperately want from bigger ones. I don't want anyone attacking people who do any of the things I mentioned here. We should criticize them respectfully and have healthy debates on the matter. If they're being disrespectful and refuse to listen, then we should ignore them and give them no attention. Because sometimes they do it more for attention. Like with the artist I talked about here. Her highest views are from her Blasian Deku shots. So I think she kept on doing it to rage bait so her channel would grow more. And she's probably doing it more to spite people, especially since people are doing way too much by harassing her online to now stalking her in real life so she's kind of doing an f you to those people so please guys do not do this criticize and if they don't want to change move on thank you for staying this long please like and subscribe to become a mipsy it has been scientifically proven that when you become one good things happen to you don't believe me try right now